Today we begin the Advent season, Year C. And this is the year we focus on the Gospel of Luke. After this year, we return to Year A. It's a three-year cycle. And Luke is the third of the Synoptic Gospels. It was the last written towards the end of the first century. And it's written towards the Gentiles. The focus we see in today's Gospel is the end of the world, which is part of what Advent is about. We look forward to the second coming of Christ as we look back to the first coming of Christ at Christmas. And so it is that time where we look actually forward to when Jesus is coming again by remembering his first time. And when we look at that, we see this powerful image that's telling us of the end of the world when Jesus comes back and brings an end to the world. The world is not <clears throat> creation. The world is all that that is the kingdom, as I said last week, the kingdom of the devil, that, that whole world of, of deception and sin and selfishness and everything else. And all of that is crumbling now, but this is when it finally reaches its, its end stage. And now the kingdom of God comes. And as you see this total destruction and this total uh, scary element, it even says in there, some people will die of fright, don't forget one particular part. It's almost like Jesus says, oh, by the way, this doesn't apply to you. Because what does he say? Stand erect, hold your head up high, because your redemption is at hand. It's kind of like if you can imagine this image of working for the Allies during World War II, and you're in, in the uh, anti-Nazi resistance, and you're in Berlin and it's the last days of the war, and you see this great destruction around you. Hitler is in his bunker with his men, and this great destruction is happening, and you realize there's nothing you can do about this. You can't allow this kingdom to keep on going, and you stand there, and you see the destruction happening, but you realize that your time has come because as the Allies come forward, you will finally be rejoining them and be saved in a sense. And that that's the image we look here as the conquering is over and the world is destroyed, but destroyed by the, by the hand of God. And all of a sudden, now the kingdom of God comes in and that's what you are part of. So he says that whole destruction, that's not part of you. You, you, you have no part in that. You stand erect because um, your redemption is at hand. Hold your head up high. And then he answers a powerful question. Who are those people who are going to be, uh, their redemption is at hand, going to be saved? This is an important question because people will say, good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. That's not what the Bible teaches, and that's important to note that. The Bible teaches those who embrace Christ and are transformed by him and persevere in their faith life, they are the ones who are saved. See, when we say good people are going to heaven and bad people are going to hell, there's plenty of people who walk away from the church saying, I'm good enough to get to heaven. But the Bible doesn't say good people going to heaven and bad people going to hell. It says people who are in relationship with Christ, who allow themselves to be transformed by the Lord, and who persevere in their faith life, they are the ones who stand erect and with their heads held high because their redemption is at hand. It is the people who reject the Lord, who, who do the one thing the devil wants them to do. And what is the one thing the devil wants us to do that we never want to do? You may think it's a very powerful sin, very destructive, very evil. No, the only thing the devil wants you to do, absolutely wants to get you to do, is to give up, to walk away, to be discouraged, to be frustrated, to be um, just uh, disillusioned and turn around and say, I want nothing to do with the church. Uh, I used to be Catholic. I was brought up Catholic. I'm not walking into a Catholic church until they change their teachings. You can see it all around you. That's the work of the devil. That's what the devil wants. He wants people to turn around and give up, to turn around and say, I don't need this. I'm going to walk away. And if you're looking for a reason to walk away, I can give you a thousand of them. But if you're looking for a reason to say, I'll give you one from St. Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Persevere is what the Lord says, and the way you persevere is not to give up. And then that time will come. Stand erect, your head up high, the kingdom of God is at hand. Your redemption is at hand. 
Well, then we look and say, well, what are those things that can lead us to turn away? And Jesus says, do not get lost in drunkenness and carousing. Well, that's a no-brainer if you think about it. Obviously, if you go out living a partying lifestyle and you turn away from the Lord and you're living in hedonism, well, obviously, that's going to lead you away from Christ. Obviously, you're going to give up. You're going to walk away. But notice the other thing, and a lot of people don't catch this. Again, they go back to good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. But what is it that the Lord teaches is just as dangerous as a sinful life? Anxiety, worry, and fear. Look what it says, the anxieties of the world. Don't get caught up in those. Think about that. You can live a completely moral life, but be filled with anxiety and fear, and that is just as damaging to your salvation and your spiritual life as if you didn't live a moral life at all. And so the Lord says to bring your worries to Him, to bring your concerns to Him, and be careful you're not a source of anxiety and worry to others. How can you do that? What do you teach your children is the most important aspect or the most important goal in their life. Is it their relationship with God or is it that they get into an Ivy League school? There you go. Gee, you know, if you're not going to get all A's, you'll never get into that Ivy League school. A lot of people don't get into Ivy League schools and they do very well. Remember that. If you're going to really put that kind of pressure on your child, you're not teaching them salvation. Never forget that they could be living a perfectly moral life, but if you fill them with anxiety and worry, if you fill yourselves with anxiety and worry, it's just as damaging as if you lived a completely immoral life. It's a powerful message to understand. People learn in different ways. People experience different things. And your goal has to be first that salvation, to persevere, to stay in the Lord. How many people are not so much upset if their child walks out of a Catholic church than if they walk out of an Ivy League school? I want you to think about that because that's an important thing to think of. Which is the more important thing? Your child perseveres in church or perseveres in an Ivy League school? Think of that. What are your priorities? And remember, the Lord is calling us to a new level of holiness, to be part of the kingdom of God. He will transform us if we are open to him. But keep in mind and never forget that it is our perseverance that leads us to eternal life. It's our perseverance in the Lord through our prayer, through our relationship with God, through our weekly attendance at Mass, that leads us to experience the fullness of the gospel so that we can reach the Lord whenever it may be, whether it is at the end of the world or when we finally stand before him at the end of our lives and say, Lord, I am here, and he says your redemption is at hand. Remember this, this is what the church is all about, to keep you encouraged and to keep you, in that, um, keep, keep you from turning away to let you know that the Lord is always with you. Have yourself a blessed Advent, and may God bless you.